Okay, so for this tutorial, we're looking at designing your car. First thing I always like to start out with is I'm going to start up here at blank setup and just work straight down the list pretty much. Um, you should already know this from research. If you have not went to research yet, go do your research first. But the eyeballs make things show. There's my blank. Uh, the wrench will allow me to make my adjustments to whatever section I'm looking at. Typically, in class, these three just stay the same. Your teacher will let you know if that will change. So, body type, rail. Body material, balsa, blank size large. Blank mass. You will need to change this. So, for my classes, at this point in time, you're going to find your blank mass I've shared with you in classroom. Um, other teachers may do this different ways, but check with your teacher. You will have a specific blank mass that you really, really need to make sure you put in here. Any future cars that you make, make sure you also add it there as well. Um, I don't have a blank right now, so I'm just going to leave it, but you should have that either starting out or within a day or two of getting started on this project. Ground clearance, you'll find out how that can be useful in subsequent tutorials. Um, rear axle position and wheelbase, same thing. Uh, depending on the size of your car, you may need to adjust those, and you may find that making adjustments to those can change the stability of your car as well and potentially make minor changes in the speed of your car which you know when you get down to a once you get a very good car that tiny little bit a thousandth of a second can be the difference between first and second place uh, so again that's in the blank setup <clears throat> and i go to done upper profile i'm going to start here i need to click on both buttons for upper profile now, for my classes, I've set up the program so it does not start with anything. It starts totally blank. On the right here, the upper profile, we have options. We have lines, splines, and curves. Try them out. See what they do. We have adding points, moving points, and deleting points. And you can always undo or completely clear everything you've done. I'm going to start out with a spline. I just like to start out here and I want to add points always start at the back of the car clear back not up here somewhere if I put a point here and then come forward what it thinks I'm doing is cutting my car off right here and it's going to be mad and have all sorts of uh, issues and specifications later so make sure you start clear back That'll solve a lot of problems that could occur right away. Uh, so right now, just to show you what's happening, if I click on rough solid, everything above that line is getting cut away. So this is, once you take your blank, you would be cutting basically on that line. I'm going to turn rough solid back off. For my car, just for example, that's fine. I'll leave it, call it done. Next up is lower profile. Same thing. I need both buttons here. I like to leave the upper profile showing so I can see where I ended the car and it just helps me design. Again, same options over here on the right. I'm going to stick, uh, for this one, I'm going to go with angles or lines. Uh, starting clear back again and just roughing out my shape. You can always go back and make adjustments at any point. Notice I brought this extending on a little farther. Uh, it doesn't matter. Just make sure, again, if I were to stop right here or something, it thinks I'm cutting the car off there. I don't want to do that. So either meet your other point or extend a little farther. Anything below this line is getting cut away. Notice there's nothing below the line here, so there's nothing to cut away. However, that removes this section here in the back. And... I can show you with the rough solid. There you go. Call it done. Uh, next is top profile. 
So right now, this is showing the side profile of the car. Just to give you an idea, let me turn on the refined solid and turn off the blank. And I put on wheels and axles. So right at this moment, here's what my car looks like. Notice the problem right away, which I'll come back and fix, but there's my car at the moment. So the top profile is next. That is looking straight down on the car. That's where I want to go next. I would turn off at least the wheels and the refined solid for this. I always like to leave the blank on when I'm designing. The reason I want to leave that blank on I need to see where the hole is here in the back. If I cut into that hole, we have some major problems. So let me turn the wheels off. Front wheels, rear wheels. Okay, so for this part, anything I design, I'm going to go back to splines. It's going to mirror across the center line. So here's my center line. If I work at the top, it mirrors it to the bottom. So I'll put a point here. I'll bring it out. At the axles, keep that as wide as it can be. Your teacher will explain in class, but it will make issues later. So um, it'll probably knock it out of spec if you come in here. So right where the axle runs through, again, the axles, the wheels go on the outside. Keep it as wide as possible. In here in the middle between the axles, if you want to bring it in, that's fine. You just have to watch the mass of your car. Um, Again, I have an axle coming up. I'm going to bring it out. And here's where my car ended before. So we'll just keep it there. Uh, one nice thing they've done in the newer version here is I can see how far off center I am. So there's my zero. Um, you know, five millimeters off center, whatever. Very nice feature to have. If I don't like a point, I can delete a point. And over on the right, I can delete a point. Uh, if I wanted to keep the point, just move it. I can also move it. That's on any of the uh, profiles here. And again, just an example car. I'm going to call it fine and go to done. So again, let's look at refined solid. See what I just did here. See, that is what the top profile did. And if I go down to rotate, here's my car right now. Um, I need to fix this right away. So that was my upper profile. Let's go into upper profile here. And I can simply, I'm going to add a point, which I just clicked on the wrong thing. There we go. Added that point. Now we're up above, and, and that will work much better. All right, so good to done here. Um, at this point, I'm going to turn off the blank. I'm going to turn off the profiles because. I have my car shell here. Uh, a few other things to know just about designing your car initially. Uh, shell cavity. In class, it's ex very highly recommended that you make what's called a rail car, which has wheels outside of the vehicle. Uh, so you would not need shell cavity. In TSA, still recommended, however, if done Properly, a shell car is a great car. It's just extremely difficult to do well and tends to lead to some pretty horrific results. But um, if you feel up to it, that's up to you. Uh, you have to watch specifications. Some years you're not allowed to have a shell car. Uh, the 2016-17 school year, you will not be allowed. All wheels must be outside. The 2015-16 school year, Rear wheels must be outside the car. Uh, the front could potentially be inside. Again, not recommended. Usually it's a stability problem and really ultimately a workmanship problem. But shell cavity, if you use this, anything that's orange will be cut out. So right now I would be basically drilling a hole straight through my car. I would need to go in and adjust the size of that shell cavity so it does not extend outside of my car. So that's what it does.
Turn it off here. Uh, refine solid. I'm going to go into the wrench. Here I can fillet the car. I can change the color. I'm going to go with bronze. Hit apply. Now it's bronze. If I did set up my shell, I can select what section of the car I want to shell here. Um, definitely for aerodynamics, you want to round or fillet your car. Uh, for the top, if I can get away with it with the white, I like to go clear blend or 10. Apply it and watch what happens here. See a nice smooth change there. Um, you know, 10 is the maximum. On the bottom, we can round the bottom. Do not go any greater than four. It will lead to problems that can easily be solved. One, two, three, or four, stick with that. Anything more, it's going to cause a headache for you and your teacher. I'm going to go to three, apply that. What, what always happens is when people actually try to round it over, it interferes with the axle holes and they knock their car out of spec. Which again leads, you know, MTSA is disqualification and class is a pretty significant point deduction. You do not want that to happen. So now I have smoother edges, easier for air to flow over top. I'm going to go to done. Uh, at this point, axles, just briefly here. Um, make sure you know what your class has available to you. Like my classes, typically we have steel and aluminum. On occasion, we may potentially have Delrin, check with your teacher, and from our classes at Admiral Bird, we have never had brass, so again, check with your teacher. We get it done. Uh, you can change that for the front and rear axle. That will affect friction, that will affect cost, and that will affect mass. Bearings, same idea, see what your teacher has available for you. The length may need to change depending on the width of the car. Uh, typically at Admiral Bird, we're going to use either plastic straw or laminated axle tube. Um, we have never purchased brass bushings or ultimate axle bushing due to price. So check with your teacher. Um, once you have that set how you want it, get it done. Uh, your wheels. Again, I'll show them here. The default is nitro. Nitro are extremely heavy. Depending on the blank mass of your car and your design, you may need heavy wheels. Probably do not want nitros. Um, external, internal wheels. Again, uh, external being outside the car, internal for a shell car. Type of wheel. Check with your teacher. See what you have available to you. Um, at Bird, we will not. One thing I can guarantee is we do not have premium wheels. Do not use those. They cost $5 per wheel at $20 per car just for wheels, plus the blanks are about $4 plus axles. We're not going to spend $30 for you to make a CO2 dragster that you'll run a few times in class and, and potentially that's it and never touch it again. So um, <clears throat> check with your teacher, see what wheels are available. Uh, I'm going to go with good old LX wheels. We always keep plenty of those in stock. They're lighter, they're thinner, less uh, friction between them and the road because there's less surface area touching the track. I'm going to get it done. The rear axle, same as before. See what's available. Set it how you want it. You may need to adjust the length. Get them done. Same with the axle. And then um, wheels in the rear. Same thing as before with the front. I prefer LX. I'm going to stick with them here. There we go. Down below we have our mass. A few different things with that. I can see the breakdown of where the weight of the car is coming from. Uh, again, do your research. See what that center of mass, how it can affect your car. Because it will definitely affect your car. Uh, for my this is too far back and I'm going to adjust it to move that center of mass forward uh, not in the tutorial but for class I'm going to do that for my car uh, if I click on the wrench for mass 
here's a breakdown. The one you really need to be concerned with is total design. Uh, depending on the year, depends on what that number needs to be, but that is the number you're watching for your specifications. Um, currently being 2015, 2016 school year, I need a minimum of 55 grams, and I cannot exceed 80 grams. And honestly, you want to keep within about two grams, one and a half to two grams of your minimum mass to have a good car. Otherwise, you honestly don't stand a chance. Sometimes slightly over is better than lighter, but you don't want to be over by any more than probably about two grams. Three might be pushing it. Uh, surface friction, I'll turn this off. We'll go back to refine solid again. There's my car. Surface friction breakdown with the wrench, or I can click and see uh, some different information here, and it shows me those points it's talking about and where that friction is coming from. So the rear axle bearing is where I'm getting the most friction from. How can I reduce that is the big question. And of course, we also have drag. Notice the docking stations will stack on on top of the other, so I like to just clean it up and surface friction I'm done with. Now I'm looking at drag again with the wrench. Um, it gives you a breakdown, and with the eyeball it shows basically what you're looking at is, imagine this as a virtual wind tunnel test. Uh, a lot of darker oranges in here and here. That means that we're getting more resistive force from the wind coming back and, and hitting in these areas. Um, what I really want to do is make this more of a streamlined shape or aerodynamic shape to reduce the amount of drag I'm getting here and in the front. Uh, if you get too low of pressure, that can cause little vortexes in the air and then can actually slow you down. But uh, I think your biggest concern initially is going to be removing any red or dark orange. Lighter orange, you know, yellow, light green, probably these three is where you want to be for the most part. Um, the lightest of oranges, the yellow, and the green. Uh, in the back, you cannot, there's nothing you can do about this. That's just the way it is. But um, other places, you know, really look at what you're getting and adjust your car so you have that air streaming over it and not holding it back or minimizing its effects on the car. So with that, um, you know, you really need to get in here and just experiment and work with it, make some different cars, run them against each other, run against uh, other people in the class. And you can really use that you know, pay attention to what's happening, use that data, that information to refine your designs, hone them in, and really make them the best designs possible. That's why we have purchased this software. Uh, outputs, we need to see if the car is in or out of spec, design of specifications. I'm out of spec in a number of places. I'm going to break those down into separate tutorials. So if you have anything read here, you're out of spec, see the appropriate tutorial or, you know, honestly, for a lot of these, common sense should kick in and you should be able to figure it out. But that, you know, we do have resources available to you if needed. And competition. If your car is out of spec, do not waste your time racing it because it's worthless to us if it's out of spec. Um, once you get it in spec, come in here, your car will be in staged, which you need to save it up for right here under the orange file. Save your design, name it, you can leave notes, uh, it shows you all the changes you made. Saving a working copy allows only you to see it and you cannot race it. If you save an inner competition, anyone in the class or district can see your car, can race your car, you can race your car. So that's the difference between the two. Don't forget to save your car. And when you're done, log out. I'm not saving my car, but you know, here you would want to make sure you have and log out.
and then you can do what you need to do and leave for the day.